welcome to the iconic 1932 film, Grand Hotel, a classic that weaves together the lives of diverse characters under one roof. Brace yourself for a cinematic journey that packs a punch with funny, shocking, and heart-wrenching moments that will keep you glued to the screen. Ever wondered about the untold stories behind this cinematic gem? Can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? Or are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? Stick around as we delve into the intriguing aspects of Grand Hotel. And now we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic masterpiece? Drop your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Keep the conversation alive. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. The secrets of Grand Hotel are waiting to unfold. Keep watching. Grand Hotel, a classic film released in 1932, stands as a pivotal work in the realm of early Hollywood cinema. Directed by Edmund Gooding, it unfolds within the opulent confines of a luxurious Berlin hotel, serving as the backdrop for intersecting lives. The plot intricately weaves together the tales of various guests and staff, portraying their dramas, secrets, and aspirations against the glamorous yet tumultuous setting. The narrative unfolds with a diverse ensemble of characters, including the charming but financially troubled Baron Felix von Jajern, portrayed by John Barrymore, and the elegant but destitute ballerina Grusinskaya, played by Greta Garbo. Their lives intersect with those of the industrious hotel clerk Otto Kringelin, embodied by Lionel Barrymore, and the ruthless businessman Herman Pracing, portrayed by Wallace Beery. They navigate a world of love, betrayal, and financial turmoil, creating a tapestry of human emotions within the confines of the grand establishment. Premiering in 1932, the film achieved significant acclaim for its innovative storytelling and stellar cast performances. Notably, it became the first to win the Academy Award for Best Picture without receiving nominations in any other categories. The movie's success solidified its place in cinematic history and left an enduring legacy as a milestone in early Hollywood. Captivating audiences with its portrayal of intersecting lives in a luxurious yet complex setting, the characters, each with their own motives and struggles, contribute to the overall intrigue and resonance of the film. Its enduring popularity is a testament to timeless storytelling and the memorable performances of its cast. A cinematic gem etched in history as a groundbreaking work in classic Hollywood, it remains a significant milestone. In 1932, a cinematic gem emerged under the guidance of a team of distinguished creators, producers, and directors. Director Edmund Gooding, known for his keen storytelling and visual finesse, skillfully navigated the intricate plot, ensuring a captivating cinematic experience. Producing the film was the esteemed Irving Thalberg, a luminary in the industry. Thalberg's ability to identify compelling narratives and bring them to the silver screen played a pivotal role in its success, underscoring his commitment to cinematic excellence. The ensemble cast featured iconic actors, each contributing their unique flair to the narrative. Greta Garbo, the luminous Swedish actress, portrayed the enigmatic ballerina Grusinskaya, adding depth to her character and leaving an indelible mark on the audience. John Barrymore, renowned for his theatrical prowess, took on the role of Baron Felix von Jajern. His charismatic performance brought a layer of complexity to the character, enhancing the overall richness of the storyline. Joan Crawford, a force to be reckoned with in Hollywood, portrayed the stenographer Fleemchen, injecting vitality and energy into the ensemble. Lionel Barrymore, the distinguished brother of John Barrymore, embodied the role of Otto Kringeling, a terminally ill bookkeeper. His portrayal of vulnerability and resilience added a poignant touch to the narrative. Wallace Beery, a versatile actor known for his dynamic range, played General Director Pracing, a character that further enriched the film's multifaceted plot. The casting process was a meticulous endeavor, with each actor chosen for their ability to breathe life into their respective roles. The chemistry among the cast members was palpable, contributing to the enduring legacy of the movie. As a testament to its impact, the film won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1932, solidifying its place in the annals of cinematic history. The collaboration between the visionary director, producers, and the stellar cast resulted in a captivating and enduring piece of art that continues to resonate with audiences. In the world of classic cinema, it stands as a shining example of storytelling prowess brought to fruition by a team of accomplished individuals.
Its intriguing characters and compelling narrative remain etched in the hearts of cinephiles, marking it as a timeless masterpiece. In the early stages of casting for the movie, Irving Thalberg intended for Norma Shearer to portray the character Fleemchen. However, due to a wave of fan mail dissuading her from taking the role, she ultimately declined. John Barrymore, drawn by the opportunity to share the screen with Greta Garbo, eagerly signed a three-picture deal with MGM for his role in the film. Remarkably, Grand Hotel, released in 1932, stands as the sole Best Picture Oscar winner without nominations in any other Academy Award category. It holds a unique place in cinematic history, joining the ranks of the Broadway Melody and Mutiny on the Bounty as one of the only three films to clinch the Best Picture Oscar without securing any additional awards. These insights offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and the distinctive Oscar trajectory of the film. Such nuances contribute to Grand Hotel's singular status among Hollywood classics, emphasizing its significance in the annals of cinematic achievement. The cast of Grand Hotel, although renowned, never shared the screen simultaneously. Despite suggestions of tension between Joan Crawford and Greta Garbo due to billing, it was Garbo's established status in 1932 that solidified her top position. Crawford, on the rise, embraced her role with zeal, admirably holding her ground among the seasoned cast. While Crawford idolized Garbo, on set dynamics kept their interactions minimal. However, a surprising moment on MGM's stairs revealed Garbo's regret at not sharing a scene, leaving Crawford thrilled. This behind-the-scenes anecdote adds a human touch to the unique ensemble dynamics of the film, showcasing the distinct interactions that shaped its production. Widely parodied in short films and cartoons, this movie from the early cinematic era holds a distinctive position in Hollywood history. MGM studio, uncertain about how Greta Garbo and John Barrymore would fare together due to their contrasting personalities, witnessed an unexpected camaraderie. Garbo, known for her peculiar quirks, greeted Barrymore warmly on the first day of filming, setting a positive tone. The two big personalities hit it off immediately, with Barrymore expressing admiration for Garbo, declaring her the loveliest woman in the world, leaving no room for studio concerns. Amidst the bustling lobby scenes, a practical approach prevailed as actors wore socks over their shoes to minimize noise. Approximately 200 pairs of woolen socks were consumed daily during the filming. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the pragmatic measures taken to ensure a smooth production process. In its time, this cinematic gem not only graced the silver screen, but also became a subject of parody, a testament to its enduring impact. The unique dynamics between Garbo and Barrymore, along with the behind-the-scenes anecdotes, add depth to the narrative, showcasing the film's distinct place in cinematic history. And there you have it, a snapshot of the fascinating aspects surrounding this cinematic classic. In envisioning John Gilbert as her on-screen lover, Greta Garbo faced a setback due to his recent box office struggles. Despite her preference, practical considerations led to a different casting choice. This decision was part of Irving Thalberg's bold vision for the film, aiming to pioneer the concept of an all-star production. Traditionally, studios favored featuring one or two stars per picture to maximize profits, but Thalberg's approach challenged this norm. Released in 1932, the movie marked a departure from conventional wisdom by assembling five top-tier MGM stars. This innovative strategy proved highly successful, turning it into one of the studio's highest-grossing productions. Thalberg's insight demonstrated that a single star-studded movie could draw audiences from each performer's fan base, a shift from the previous practice of creating multiple films to achieve a similar effect. Premiering with tickets priced as high as $150, an extraordinary sum in 1932, the film defied expectations at the box office. This significant pricing decision reflected its unique position and potential to captivate audiences. Thalberg's forward-thinking approach set the stage for subsequent all-star productions such as Dinner at Eight in 1933, cementing the movie's legacy in Hollywood history. The unconventional casting choices and groundbreaking financial success provide a distinct perspective on the dynamics of early Hollywood. With its pioneering approach and exceptional box office performance, the production remains a milestone in the evolution of film production strategies during that era. 
Crafted on a 700000 budget, the 1932 movie Grand Hotel emerged as one of MGM's notable successes in the 1930s, grossing one 647000 in its initial release. A financial triumph, it showcased Irving Thalberg's innovative vision, challenging the norm by assembling five top-tier MGM stars in a pioneering all-star production. The Hollywood premiere of the movie featured an unexpected twist. Despite promises of a Greta Garbo performance, co-star Wallace Beery took the stage in drag, poorly mimicking Garbo and repeating her famous line, I want to be alone. The skit left the audience unimpressed, revealing a humorous misstep in the film's promotional strategy. Upon the completion of shooting in mid-February 1932, MGM heavily promoted Grand Hotel, boasting it as the greatest cast ever assembled in its trailer. Thalberg's strategic approach, defying traditional casting practices, contributed to its success, setting the stage for future all-star productions. In retrospect, the movie's impact transcends its cinematic achievement. With its financial triumph, unexpected premiere antics, and the groundbreaking approach to casting, it remains a milestone in early Hollywood, demonstrating Thalberg's foresight and reshaping the industry's production strategies. The MGM Grand in Las Vegas, standing where Bali's now resides, was deliberately designed to mirror the architectural style of the film. This connection between the physical realm and the cinematic echoes showcases the enduring impact of the film on popular culture. During rehearsals, Wallace Beery, an Oscar winner, exited in frustration, vowing to return only when Joan Crawford improved her acting skills. This incident highlights the intense dynamics within the cast and the challenges faced during the production. Vicki Baum, the author and playwright, drew inspiration for Mention in Hotel from a real scandal involving a stenographer and an industrial magnate at a hotel. Additionally, her personal experiences as a chambermaid at prominent Berlin hotels influenced the narrative. This factual foundation underscores the authenticity embedded in the film's storyline. Intriguingly, the Hollywood premiere featured an unexpected twist when Wallace Beery, instead of Greta Garbo, took the stage in drag, humorously mimicking her famous line, I want to be alone. This unconventional promotional strategy added a touch of humor but left the audience unimpressed. The confluence of these unique elements, from the architectural influence on the MGM Grand to the onset tension, and the real-life inspirations for the narrative, offers a nuanced understanding of the film's multifaceted connections. These aspects, along with the unconventional premiere antics, contribute to the intriguing tapestry of Grand Hotel's legacy in Hollywood.